Oh, it is recording. Brilliant. It's recording. Okay, welcome. Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's webinar, which is all about networking strategies for your career advancement. My name is Jackie Lawrence. I am one of the career coaches at Udacity, and I'm joined today by my colleague, Mira, who will be assisting me in the chat room. So she'll be there to pick up any queries you may have. And also she will assist me at the end of the session when we do our Q&A webinar um, or our Q&A part. So um, Mira, thank you so much for joining me today and for your support. So let's move on to our next slide. Okay, so it's just going to be a little bit about me. So who am I? Like I said, I am Jackie Lawrence. What do I do? Well, I am a career and business strategy coach. So from a career coaching perspective, I work with students, I work with individuals who are already established in a career transition to something else. So if you wanted to shift to a different career pathway, whatever field or category it may be, I support that. I also work with people who may be looking to climb up the corporate ladder or with individuals who may simply want to explore what are their career opportunities. In addition to that, I do business strategy coaching. This is where I work with individuals who may be sole traders, business owners, entrepreneurs, and I help them to build successful businesses by enabling them to create their visionary roadmap and bring it through to reality by identifying opportunities for growth and development, and then defining how are they gonna to get to where they are now to where they want to be. So when I'm not working, what do I do? Well, I enjoy traveling. Um, believe it or not, even in this sort of COVID-19 period that we're going through, I did manage to get away and travel, um, but I'm, I'm glad that uh, that all went well. I'm back safely, glad to say that. Um, it was a different traveling experience, but um, I'm still gonna hold on to that. And I also do Korean yoga, and I really enjoy participating in charitable events. Okay, so let's move on to our next slide. And that is going to be telling you about what we are planning to cover today. Okay, so all it is that's next is really our agenda for the day. And we Sorry, are going Jackie, to, to interrupt. Is everyone able to see the presentation? Just type yes in the chat, please. Yeah, yeah, I'm seeing. Okay, perfect. Thank Brilliant. You. Okay, great. Okay, sorry, everybody. Okay, let's move on to that's it, slide three. So, this is just the topics we will go through today. We're going to kick off with importance of networking for your career development. So, let's move on to our next slide. So, I um, would like to start this session off really with a poll. And what I'd like to understand is where are you in your career journey? So each of you here, where are you? Are you doing a career transition or going through a tra career transition or hoping to transition to a different career? Are you looking for a new role or are you seeking internal promotion? So I'm about to launch the poll now. And hopefully you can all see that. Okay, so... That poll is launched, and I'm going to give you a minute now to let me know where are you in your career journey. Okay. Oh, it's changing. Quite a lot of you are transitioning. It's great. Looking for a new role. Yeah. That's great. I'm going to give it a bit longer. 78% of you have voted, so we could, we've got room for more of you to continue put your votes in. Career transition, looking for a new role or seeking internal promotion. Okay, okay, we're at 83%. Gonna give it a minute, see if we can get it up higher. Fantastic. Okay, we're in our last 10 seconds. And then I will end the poll. It's an interesting Actually, and I don't know whether it's because of COVID, but the outcome seemed interesting. Okay, looks like that's it. Oh, one or two more coming in. Okay, I'm going to end the poll. Okay, so in first place, the majority of you seem to be career transitioning. So that's 49% of you looking for a new role, 41% of you and 10% of you are seeking internal 
promotion. And I don't know, maybe some of you, your views and perspective have changed as a result of COVID. Maybe pre-COVID, um, more of you might have decided to transition. But I know and I can appreciate that some of you um, have may have decided to stay put in your field and then are looking to transition. And the whole point of doing this is that your approach to networking will differ according to whether you're looking to transition into a new field, whether it's a new role or whether you're seeking internal promotion. So as we go through this webinar, just bear that in mind, okay? Um, you know, some bits are going to be more relevant for people looking for a new role, some bits are gonna be more relevant for people doing an internal promotion and some are gonna be for transitioning. Okay, so let's end that poll and we can now move on to our next slide. Okay, so moving on. So why don't we start by getting clear on what do we mean by networking? Well, networking is about establishing and nurturing long-term mutually beneficial relationships with people you meet. Another defini definition I came across, which I think sums it up pretty well, is from the author of Never Eat Alone, which is a networking book in itself. And the author is Keith Farazi, and he defines it as, today's most valuable currency is social capital, defined as the information, expertise, trust, and total value that exists in the relationships you have and social networks to which you belong. So given that networking is considered such a valuable currency, what is it about networking that puts people off? Well, some people say it's too time consuming. Maybe you don't feel comfortable talking to people you don't know. Maybe there's a fear of rejection. It could be that you don't want to tell other people your business. You may be just a case of you lack the understanding about how to network effectively. Or maybe you're an introvert and you feel uncomfortable about putting yourself out there. Do any of these reasonings sound familiar to you? Well, it is estimated that up to 80% of new job hires are in the hidden job market. What do I mean by that? Well, basically, 80% of new roles are never publicly advertised. Instead, they are either filled internally or through networking. So whilst networking may not be at the top of your agenda, if you want to get access to the hidden job market, particularly in this current environment where the number of roles advertised have been reduced and there are hardly any face-to-face -face meetings taking place, virtual networking is an area you need to give some priority to. So let's look at the next slide. And so moving on there, when you've got so many things to juggle, so you've got your work, your family commitments, keeping up with your nano degree, you're probably thinking, I don't have time for networking. Or if I'm going to be plowing a lot of effort into this, what will I get in return? Well, here is just a couple of the benefits of effective networking. What will you get in return? Well, you can get access to skills and resources. A network which includes people with a range of skills and expertise enables you to exchange your information in return for their expertise. It can help you boost your career. More jobs, like I said, are filled through networking than advertising. So networking provides referral opportunities. It can help you to stay on top of the latest trends in your industry. So I'm sure you've had occasions, particularly pre-COVID, where you might have gone to face-to-face -face networking, talk to somebody in your industry or an industry you want to move into, and they've mentioned something totally new that you haven't heard of before that's trending, right? So these are some of the benefits. It can help you improve job performance. The more people you know in your organisation, the more people or experts you can call upon when you need to get something done or if something goes wrong. It enables you to meet prospective mentors, employers, partners, or clients for your business. Moving on to the next slide, just two more benefits to add. It can give you enhanced visibility. So it can be really easy to be overlooked for promotions or new job opportunities. Networking ensures that you stay visible to people both inside your organization and outside your organization. It can help you to gain access to resources and companies that can help foster your career development. So just moving on to the next slide, I'd like you to share your thoughts. So just share your thoughts on what do you struggle with when it comes to networking? So what exactly is it that you struggle with when it comes to networking? Can you just type your comments in the chat below and me and Mira, Mira will take a look at them. So what is it that you struggle with? Can you pinpoint it? Let's have a look. 
yeah. Ignored, referrals, yeah. Breaking the ice, definitely we're going to be covering breaking the ice. Yeah. Where to go to network, yeah. Feeling like you don't have anything interesting to say. Breaking the ice is coming up a couple of times. Not knowing what to talk about. Yeah, and I can totally understand. So many of these points we're actually going to touch as we go through the webinar. And so it's great that you're all mentioning these because it means that hopefully you should get a lot of helpful points out of this. Yeah, I can see people are still commenting. That's absolutely great. Thank you, the right group of people. That's great. Not knowing how to proceed, how to reconnect with former colleagues. Okay, great, these are all helpful. All right, okay, so let's move on so that you can find out more about what you can do and the steps that you can take. So moving on to our next slide, and that's going to be all about cultivating a mindset for networking. So whether you're looking to transition to a different career or an internal promotion or applying for a new job in your current field of work, you really need to cultivate your mindset for networking. As you start networking, or for those of you who've already started networking and are looking to increase your network, keep these points in mind, right? It's the quality of your network that matters, not the quantity. Now, some of you may have thousands of people in your network, but do you really know who those people are? Do they serve a purpose? Can you help them? You don't know unless you go through your network. How many of those people would you be comfortable contacting and asking for a referral or sharing your career thoughts with? Also, don't wait until you're about to start applying for a job or going for that internal promotion before you start networking. When is the right time to start networking? Now, okay? You should always be networking as it takes time to develop relationships. When you're initiating relationship with people, do it with authenticity and generosity. So don't keep talking about your personal agenda, right? Do some research before you connect with someone. Do you share any confidence and interest with them that you can point to when you reach out to them? Do they have some amazing achievements? Often when we acknowledge others' achievements, they warm to us quicker, right? You know how you feel when someone's speaking to you and they mention your background or they mention, you know, that they see you've achieved this award or what you've accomplished. So our human nature gives us a desire to be valued and appreciated. Remember, building up a good network takes time. It's not a sprint. You must be willing to invest time and energy, and that's right, time and energy, into building up good relationships you will find that you get out of it exactly what you put in. Whether you're communicating via email or phone, people can feel your energy. I'm sure you've all had instances where you've either been speaking to someone on the phone or you've been at a face-to-face -face meeting and they just don't seem engaged. You can tell and sense that they've been distracted by something and it can be quite frustrating. Be strategic in who you network with. So think about who you really should be connecting with. Do you really need to be connecting? So let's say, for example, you are, for example, a machine learning engineer, and you may be looking to transition to product management. So then you need to think about, do you really need to be connecting with another 50 people with expertise in machine learning? Your efforts need to be directed in the direction you want your career to move. Remember, networking is a two-way process. Be willing to pay it forward. What does that mean? So some of you may have heard about the pay it forward concept. So do a good deed for someone else and then they will feel inspired to do a good deed for another person and so forth and so forth. So sometimes you may find yourself in the position where you can provide some value to the other person first. If you do, don't hold back. The value you get back may not come directly from that individual, but they may refer you to someone else who opened the door for you. So moving on to our next slide, we have another poll for you. Um, and this poll is about where do you go to meet new connections? So I'm interested to understand which platform do you go to meet your new or find new connection? Um, and this is really in the context of, of work as opposed to or your career development as opposed to personal. So I'm about to launch this second poll. Uh, this is poll number two. Here it goes. So 
do you go on LinkedIn, Facebook, Slack, other professional networking groups, or is it a case that you haven't done any networking yet because you're not sure where to go or how to go about it? Okay, so where do you go to find new connections? Okay, it's interesting. A bit of variety. Oh, interesting. Okay. Okay, we're doing well. We've got 75% of the votes in. Brilliant. Okay. All right, good. Doing well on this one. Wow. Okay, I'm going to give it about another 15 seconds. We're at 82%. So we're almost there. You can get it a bit higher. That'd be great. Okay. Brilliant. Okay, is that it? We're at. Jackie, is this a multi-choice question? One of the students is asking or have you kept it as a single choice question? I've kept it as a single choice. I know some of you may have actually, and I should have clarified that, some of you may have actually used more than one um, platform, but what's your preferred choice? So what's your number one choice that you tend to go to first um, when you're looking for connections in order to increase your, your professional network? Okay. All right. Uh, Jackie, one of the students has asked whether they can also see the results. I think uh, usually it comes up for the students and they are able to see the results. Yeah. But not? today even I'm not able to see the results. Ooh, I don't no, know it's not visible. So maybe some tech issue. Yeah. It might be, yeah, sorry about that. Normally you can see the results. I'm not sure why it's not showing today. Let's see if it does show this time round, okay? All right, so three more seconds and I'm going to end it because we're at 90%, I think, 86%. All right, let's end this poll. So you guys, hopefully, let me know if you can see these results. Okay, I'm gonna share the results. Can you guys see that? So at number one, yes, brilliant. Okay, so where do you find you can? Number one is LinkedIn, right? Um, followed by, I haven't done any network. So 20%, 21% of you haven't done any networking. Then about 8% of you have um, gone via professional networking groups, 3% Slack. Nobody has put Facebook. That is very interesting. There are a lot of groups on Facebook, funny enough. Um, and it's interesting. Uh, I'm going to stop sharing the results. There is no wrong or right answer. Okay. This is all about um, preference. The different platforms have a different culture. Um, LinkedIn is often referred to and known as the professional flat, um, platform. Facebook has a number of interesting groups and some people may find that actually the personality of the individuals who are in the groups on Facebook are very different from LinkedIn. So I know in my experience in terms of joining groups on both platforms, I have found that people on Facebook in Facebook groups are much more helpful in terms of um, people will express their vulnerabilities and say, I need help in this area, or how do you do that? And how do you do this? And you will find that 20 or plus comments or people come forward with views. I just find on LinkedIn, people are a bit closed, more closed in terms of sharing their views and their opinions. They're much more guarded. Um, Slack again has a, has a different culture. So do try, you know, don't be scared to try the different groups to see which ones work best for you for different things. Great. All right, everyone, thank you very much for your participation in that poll. And now we can move on to our next slide. And so I've got to talk to you now about formulating your networking strategies. So before you start connecting with people, think about what it is that you hope to achieve from networking. Is it information? Is it advice? Are you looking for a referral or job leads? Um, what is it that you're planning to do? Right. Is your aim and goal to transition to a different career? Are you looking to get a job at your ideal company? So you've got a target company, whichever it is that you're planning to do, start mapping out your network. So this is about going through your current list of contacts on LinkedIn, on Facebook or professional networks in your iPhone or your your whichever type of phone that you have, your Samsung, your Galaxy, whatever um, voluntary groups and categorize them. And literally, I mean, categorize them in terms of what profession are people in? Um, you know, um, where do they work? How experienced are they? You might try and categorize them in different ways. I've got a particular template that I like to do, a framework, and I'm going to share that with you on the next slide. 
so that you can see and get a better feel and example for what I mean by mapping out your network. So here's an example of a network mapping table. And you can see I've got four columns at the moment. And in it, the first one is name of connection. So what's the name of your connection? I've used Joe Blobs as an example. What is their functional role? So Joe Blobs here is a senior data scientist at Exco. Contact details. So if you wanted to contact Joe Blobs, how are you going to contact him? Is it on LinkedIn? Is it on Slack? You might put a telephone number down. And then what is the purpose of connecting with them? Are you connecting with them to set up an international interview? Are you looking for a mentor? What's your purpose? And then you could also add a fifth column, right? And the fifth column you could call outcomes or comments. So in this fifth column, this is where you set out any follow-up points. So for example, if you had an informational interview or a referral request, was was the outcome of that informational interview? Um, do you need to follow up with Joe Blogs in three weeks time? Um, is it a case of you ask for a referral and the person said they can't help you, so maybe you're going to take them off your list? So really think about um, your network and really you need to refresh it from time to time, right? Uh, it's not saying that you'll get rid of people who you feel can't do anything for you, but really kind of think about who's in your network, why they're in their network, and not just what they can do for you, but maybe how can you add value or how can you help them? So moving on to the next slide, we are going to look at something that came up earlier on when I asked people, what do they struggle with? Breaking the ice. So um, a common fear that people have when it comes to networking is what do I say? And so um, it is, you know, kind of like, you know, what am I going to say? Okay, yeah, I want to go, I'm interested, you know, where do I start? And so one of the best places to start is developing an elevator pitch, okay? And this really will help you break the ice. And for those of you who may not be familiar with elevator pitches, it's basically a short summary of you about yourself, um, which should communicate your skills and attributes in a competent way, right? So it's really a short summary. Why is it called an elevator pitch? Well, basically, you should be able to deliver it in about 30 seconds to one minute, which is deemed to be the time it should take you to get to the top of a building when you're in an elevator. So hence the name elevator pitch. What can you use this for? Well, you can use it for internal. So whether you're within your organization as well or external networking, you can use it for job searches and you can use it for interview. And you know, when you're using it for an interview, the example is where you would use it is if they ask you, tell me about yourself. Well, really, you know, your elevator pitch should deliver that succinctly, right? It's not about going through your whole resume, but succinctly summing up in a short, brief summary, you know, your background, what you do um, and where you're going. So let's have a look at a framework for putting an elevator pitch together. So let's move on to the next slide. Ah, so before we do that, apologies, let's go back a step. I'm just going to tell you a bit more about creating your elevator pitch. So when it comes to actually creating it and you're thinking about, well, what do I say? You know, how should I structure it? Start by thinking about the objectives of your pitch. So are you in the process of a career change? Again, are you seeking a promotion? So you're going to want to introduce yourself, um, summarize what you do and your experience, share your strengths and your unique selling points. Um, and when you're doing this, when you're sharing your strengths or your unique selling, unique selling points, this is where you need to make your connection. So this is where you want to connect what you do or what you want to do to what the person you're speaking to does. So for example, maybe you're transitioning to digital marketing and the person you're speaking to is a manager at an advertising agency. So there you go, you've now connected to that person. You, you know, that's the person you're speaking to, you're doing digital marketing, you need to speak into their world, basically, okay? Then you're going to want to, going to, want to share what you would like to do in the future and why. That's your, your real connection, connecting that stronghold. And then try and keep this structure in mind before an interview or a networking event. And practice, so your, pitch is going to be evolving. It's not going to be static. As you go through experiences and, and as you continue your studies um, and your thoughts change about what you want to do and what maybe what industry you want to work in, you'll find that it evolves. So you're going to need to refine it, practice it, 
and turn it into a conversation. Let it flow, right? It should flow. Okay. The other thing I would just say is avoid including things like hobbies, interests, cliche words. Keep it simple, right? Don't start using really technical jargon. Um, and also avoid anything too personal. Speak naturally, slow it down, use plain language. And like I say, not lots of Czech jargon and express confidence, right? Unless you're able to express confidence when you're delivering your pitch, it loses its effectiveness, which is why it's important to practice it. Yeah, you want to deliver it confidently. Okay, so let's move on to the next slide. And this is where I've got the elevator pitch framework. So as you can see, the first bit is about who are you? Hi, my name is, and yes, you do need to say who you are. Um, what's your background? Okay, so I've got it in two ways. My name is so-and-so, I am, you then you would fill in the position um, or title with X amount of years of experience in one of the industries. Or you might go for the second version, which is my background is in X industry and my work focuses on whatever your niche is. What do you enjoy doing, creating, developing, building? Um, then you would move on to say, I continue to pursue something like a personal growth and development, and I'm currently exploring opportunities in X. And then you'd in insert your desired role or position so that you can, how would you contribute? Okay, so it's who, you, who are you, what's your background, make the connection or present your unique selling point. Um, the final thing, you know, and it all depends on how well you connect with the person, but the final thing you may want to do, if you're feeling confident enough and you feel that the connection is there, is ask for what you want. Okay, so what do you mean by ask for what you want? Isn't that too upfront, some of you might say. But this depends, like I say, on the context of the person, um, on the context of where you are and the person who you're speaking to. But for example, if you're looking for a mentor and you would like to explore that possibility, then simply ask them, do you do mentoring? Or you might say, I'm looking for a data analyst role and wondered if you could tell me the best way and time to apply for an opportunity with your company. You know the saying, if you don't ask, you don't get, right? And so I've just kind of put a, a brief summary or a brief example of how you might put one together. So I'm just using this as an example, but I don't have a business analytics background, um, but I'm gonna use this anyway. So. I say, hi, my name is Jackie. It's a pleasure to meet you. I have a background in business analytics with just over eight years of experience creating data-driven solutions for various business problems in fintechs. I enjoy working with data, creating new concepts, and I'm continually looking to grow and develop my skin skill set. I'm currently exploring opportunities as a data analyst, as I have had great success in strategic evaluation of data analysis with our management team. So that's just kind of a brief example of how you might put one together in practice. Okay, so let's move on to our next slide, which is our third poll, poll time. And I'm interested to know if you have an elevator pitch, how do you feel about it? So I don't know how many of you have an elevator pitch. How do you feel about it? Do you think it's brilliant? Do you have one but hardly use it? Do you have one but feel actually it needs improving? or is it a case that you just don't have an elevator pitch? So I'm gonna launch this third poll now. Okay, let's find, where's it gone? Here it goes. Okay, are you ready? Just launched it. So if you have an elevator pitch, how do you feel about it? It's brilliant. I hardly, I have one, but hardly use it, or I have one, but it needs improving, or I don't have an elevator pitch. And that's absolutely fine if you don't, that's what you're, you're here for, okay? Ah, okay. If you have an elevator pitch, how do you feel? Brilliant, I have one. Okay, numbers are coming in. Okay, we're at 81%. Let's see if we can get it a bit higher. Good, 82, going up a bit more. Be great to get a couple more votes in. Yeah, okay, 82, can we get it a bit higher? Bit more, bit more. I'm gonna give it 11 more seconds. We're coming down to, coming up to one minute. And one minute, okay. Let's end this poll, okay.
All right, so the results are in. And interesting enough, I shall share the results with you guys. You will see 48% of you have voted that you don't have an elevator pitch. Absolutely fine. So you're here for to have a framework to start working on one. 34% actually have one, which is great, but you acknowledge that it needs improving. Um, you know, and by all means, you know, you can work on it. Of course, you can also book a session with a career coach to work on yours. 16% um, of you, you actually have one, but hardly use it. And 2% of you think it's brilliant. Well, that's great. If you think it's brilliant, fantastic. But I can see that a lot of you don't have one. So that will probably be something that you really need to think about putting together. And those of you who have one but need to improve it will probably have to schedule time to work on it. And also those of you who have one but hardly use it, think about now the context in which you can start using it. Okay. Okay. Now I've closed that. Okay, so let's move on to the next slide. Okay, so as we said, your professional network can help you find jobs and unlock new opportunities, right? So this is really going to be a case of focusing now on where you can network. And I have chosen at the moment, just for this purposes, I know there are many networking platforms, but for the purpose of this webinar, I'm gonna focus on LinkedIn. Um, and I know a lot of you network principally on LinkedIn. So when it comes to building up your network on LinkedIn, your professional network, as we said, can help you find jobs and unlock new opportunities. So if you're just starting to network on LinkedIn, start by connecting with people you know. So friends, family, colleagues, then reconnect with people you haven't spoken to in a while. So um, when you're connecting and reconnecting, particularly with people you haven't spoken to in a while, send a personalized message, okay? Um, personalize it, right? Where do you meet them from? Where do you know them from? You know, and you might want to say, hey, I've just really, you know, I've just started really networking on LinkedIn. I'm looking to reconnect with people I worked with in the past or make that connection. How do you know them? Where do you know them from? Okay. And just reach out to people on a personal basis. A lot of people just sent blank connection requests and, you know, that doesn't make you very memorable. So that's why you really want to personalize it. Be visible. Okay. So as your confidence creeps up on, on LinkedIn and you get your confidence up, share insights, your experiences, your ideas. Some of you I know already write blogs and some of you put them on Medium, but think about sharing them on other platforms where you engage with people. Those of you who are going through a career transition or a career change, connect with people who work in the industry you want to transition to. So you will probably most likely have a lot of people in your network already who are in your current industry. And that's not gonna help you make that transition. So now you need to start reaching out to people in the industry that you want to work in. And as I mentioned before, you wanna send a personalized connect request and also one of the things you can do if you haven't already done so is join LinkedIn groups that cover your field of interest. So there are a number of, of groups on LinkedIn, tech focused and otherwise, um, some will focus principally on data science, some may focus on machine learning, front end development, find a group for you. And I'm gonna talk about and show you how to do that search on LinkedIn um, in a slide coming up. So let's just move on to the next slide. And again, we're still talking about building up your network on LinkedIn. So if you, um, sorry, let's just move on to the next slide. So I'm just making sure we are now on searching for groups to join. Okay, so just talking about the group thing, um, you all know what you're doing, what you're studying. And so in this example, you'll see a screenshot from LinkedIn. So this is my LinkedIn page. Um, and I've done a search for product manager groups, right? So product managers. So I've basically gone into the search field on LinkedIn. I've typed in product manager. And what happens is you will get a drop down. So when you type in your area of interest, a list will drop down with the options by which you can search for a group. You click on groups. So it will give you people groups. It will give you other options. You click on groups. And it then gives you a list of groups you could potentially join. And you can see here, it's got sort of PM community, um, the accidental product manager. You can also see the number of members in each of these groups. 
And so take some time when you're looking for a group to join, particularly if you're transitioning, because the value of being in these groups means that it's a good way for you to start growing your network with other people who are already working in your industry, either well-established at mid-level, junior, or also aspiring to get into it. Okay. And you can also get lots of learnings from these groups. Some of these groups are very fast moving. So some of you who may have joined groups may find that actually, yeah, there's a lot going on in the groups. Some of the groups may be a bit stagnant. So you might find nothing happens for like a week or two weeks or three weeks. And then suddenly there might be a burst of activity. So um, choose your groups wisely and you won't know until you're in a group and there's nothing that restricts you from joining a number of groups so there's no real restriction so have a look click on the link see what they say about the groups and then all you need to do is submit a request to join and normally you hear back from the administrator in a couple of days depending on who the administrator is and how busy they are when you're in the group do not feel um, obliged that you have to comment you have to, to like things but it does actually help in terms of forming relationships that if you see someone um, that you want to connect with then obviously um, you reach out, you connect with them, you send them a personalized request, introducing who you are, explaining that you've recently transitioned into that particular field or you're aspiring um, or looking to transition into that field and that you're building up your network of professionals in that area. That makes you a lot more memorable. So I often say to my students, if I'm receiving 10 or 12 um, connect requests each day and they're blank, the ones that are going to stand out for me are the one or two people who take the time and effort to personalize it because it then makes me feel that they've taken the time and effort to really look at what I do and really try to make that that connection with them in terms of what do you share similar interests so that's one way of searching the other way you can do the search so if you move on to the next slide some of you will have a list of companies that you know you would like to work for so you already know the industry that you want to work for. And in this example, you'll see that this is a screenshot um, from Netflix's, Netflix's LinkedIn page. And the difference with that is if, for example, you were thinking, well, I really love to work for Netflix, I'd like to connect with some people at Netflix. What you can do on this is you will see on the left hand side, you're going to have all these tabs and one of them is people. And if you click in people, you can do search that way. So you might decide to look, say, data analysts at Netflix or digital marketing um, junior digital marketing person at Netflix and if you click in the job or if you just click on people you should get a list of people who work at that organization be able to see their job titles so that's another way of connecting with people via LinkedIn and, and using LinkedIn as a, as a connecting tool for networking so let's just move on to the next slide so virtual networking. So this is obviously um, our new world now. So COVID-19 has significantly impacted the way we do many things, and one of which is events. Um, virtual networking meetings have become a very common replacement for face-to-face -face networking events. Um, I myself, have, I've also attended some mega networking events that have gone on, and some of you may also have done so. So if you're attending one, have a game plan so what do i mean by that well having a game plan is sort of don't just go there and sort of think well i'll see what's going on go there with um, a plan in mind so how many people do you want to connect with right um what are you looking for in that network so here i'll give an example maybe you might say what i want to get out of this networking session is i will connect with three new people right when you're there act as if you were attending a face-to-face -face event so i know you know virtually Generally, we only see people sort of top up and we don't really see the bottom of each other, obviously, nature of virtual networking. But um, you never know when, for some reason, you may have to get up. You may have to get up and walk out the room for some reason. You may have to get up and do something. Um, and obviously, you want to look presentable from head to toe because whether it's face to face or virtual, first impressions still last and can make an impact turn up on time so even if you feel that you're simply dialing in um, turning up on time speaks volumes be prepared again when somebody asks you what do you do this is where it's really ideal to have your pitch ready right you want to be able to feel comfortable and relaxed and just be able to explain quite competently what it is that you do be authentic be yourself if you're not yourself, you know, people will see many different sides of you and you want to show consistency, whether you're at a face-to-face -face event, whether you're at a virtual event. 
watch your body language. So even though you're online, people will watch to see, are you slumping? Are you fidgeting? Do you touch your face a lot? So that speaks volumes about your confidence and how you feel. And remember, you know, listen and also ask questions. And if you make connections via um, these virtual meetings, always follow up afterwards. So um, you may exchange emails online, but remember within at least 48 hours to 72 hours, you want to be able to send them, for example, a LinkedIn connection, or you want to send a text and just say, thank you for, um, it'd be great to connect with you or have a conversation with you at a later date or a time. Really seal and start building on that relationship as soon and as quickly as possible. So we're going to move on to the next slide, which is our final poll for the session. Okay. And so this final poll is, I'm looking to understand, have you asked people within your network for any of the following? So have you ever asked people in your network for an information, informational interview? Have you asked them for career advice or have you asked them for a referral? So I am just going to launch that poll. Oh, was that still up there? Apologies, everyone. I didn't realise it was still up there. So I am going to launch this. What's that in there? Last poll. Have you asked people in your network for any of the following? Hopefully you can see that now. Good. Yeah. Informational interview, career advice, referrals. So what have you asked people in your network for? What have you felt comfortable and confident about asking people in your network for? Okay. So bearing in mind your needs, what are your needs in terms of achieving your career goals? Okay, we have 58% in. Okay, keep those votes coming in, please. It'd be great to get a, a good sample of how you've been using networking so far, what you've done. And it's interesting to understand what you feel's worked for you. Okay. 64%, 65 good. And give you guys a couple more seconds. Keep them coming in, 66%. It'd be great to get a bit higher. Results are quite interesting, actually, what people have felt comfortable doing, what people have actually asked people for, and I will share that with you all. Okay. All right. I'm going to give you guys 10%, 65%. Yeah, let's get out a bit more. If we can at least get it to 70, that's great. There's a number of you who have not Jackie. voted on the poll yet. Hi, Jackie. Hi. Hi. Uh, there's one of the students who made a good comment. He said that, that there should be a fourth uh, option, which is none because it's possible for some yes. people that it could be none. I agree, so, yeah. I agree. maybe yeah. some of you have done none. And yeah, that's a good point. Some of you may well have done none. And if you haven't done any, um, it'd be, please, you know, feel free to put that in the chat because it'd be interesting to know how many of you have done none. Yeah, okay, I can see some people actually putting none down. Okay, interesting. A lot of you have done none. So you've got all this, this pool of resources sitting in your content bank, your professional content bank. Wow, a lot of you have done none. So yeah, that should have been a fourth option. I take that on board next time. So that's great. Yep, okay, I'm gonna end this poll now so that you guys can see the results are in. Okay, and I'm gonna share so you can see. So with those of you who have voted and who have actually reached out to people in your network, 52% have actually reached out for career advice. 23% have reached out for referrals and 15% for informational interviews. And it's quite interesting um, how many of you have actually reached out for career advice, but not gone the next step of asking for an informational interview or a referral. And we're actually going to look at informational interviews uh, in upcoming in the next few slides, which hopefully will give you guys a bit more confidence in how you go about actually asking and requesting one. Okay, so I'm going to stop sharing this now. And we are going to move on to our next slide. Okay, so moving on, should be on slide 22. Okay, so this is going back to continuing 
what I was just talking about, informational interviews. So once you've categorized people within your network and you've actually started reaching out and building up a relationship with certain individuals, you may then want to move on to a more formal approach, such as an informational interview and a referral is another, another time of, type of more formal approach. And so for those of you who are wondering, what is an informational interview? Well, this is an informal meeting with someone who worked in a career or has experience or knowledge in an area of interest to you. You start it by making an initial request. So re request. So you can make an initial request for an informational interview by email. You can do it by phone, through LinkedIn or some other form of contact in which you will ask for 20 to 30 minutes of another person's time. Okay. And then, you know, you will also need to be clear and concise about what you're looking for out of that session. So you'll need to be clear about who you are, why you're contacting them, what your purpose is. And this goes back to my point about when I said when you initially reach out to people, you want to personalize it. You want to personalize it so already you're becoming memorable to them. When they're posting things on LinkedIn or they're sharing posts or they're commenting on something, you also want to from time to time like their posts because then you appear in their feeds from time to time. So you're not going to be a distant memory the whole time. You will pop up from time to time in their feeds and that makes it easier for you to go out and to be able to make that connection and say, you know, hey, um, you're in my network. Um, you've been, you know, I've seen you put some interesting posts out there. And then you can go on to kind of move it on towards leading up to asking for one of these informational interviews. So moving on to the next slide, it's about preparing for the session. Okay, so now we're on the next slide. So like I'm saying before, because you are initiating this contact, you need to be prepared to lead the session, right? You will be asking the questions to gain information about a particular industry or company. So make sure you have your questions prepared before you contact the individual. So you'll probably need to spend some time really thinking about what it is that you want to get out of that session. Do your research. So make sure you have done your research on the individuals and acknowledge their accomplishments. Be considerate. Remember that the individual's time is valuable. Let them know how much you appreciate them considering your quest or taking time out to help you. Remember to state plainly, you are not asking them for a job. You are merely seeking information to help progress your career. So let's move on to the next slide, right? And um, just to add to that, what I would say is that um, sometimes you may go out, you may ask for an informational request and they may say no because they're too busy and that's absolutely fine. If you get that response, then just go back to them and say, well, hey, I appreciate knowledge and understand you may be busy. Can I send you my questions in an email? Can I email my questions to you? And then you can get back to me with an answer in your own time. Okay. The main thing to do is try and keep that connection and that, that conversation open. Maybe they can't do it then, maybe they can agree to do it next month, or maybe they're happy for you to reach out to them at a later date. But just kind of keep it open and just don't feel that because they've said no, that's an instant closed door. Okay. So on this slide, what I've done is um, I've listed a couple of examples of questions you could ask at an informational interview. Okay. And one of the things you're going to want to do is to try to keep your questions open ended. OK, because this will engage the person in conversation rather than making it yes or no questions. And so some of the things that you might be interested. So this is just an example of what I presented. It may not be exactly what you would want to ask, but think about what information you can gain. And remember, the advantage of these informational interviews is that it allows you, enables you to gather and gain data from that person or about an organization that you cannot find anywhere else. You cannot find it out on the internet if you do um, some research about the com company. You can't find it on their website. This is, you know, really insight data which you can take away and then you need to decide what you want to do with it. Maybe not everything that they say um, you will find value in, but you have that pool of information that you can decide maybe this will help me um, for an upcoming interview, which may be at their organization or for other upcoming interviews in that field. So let's just take a look at some of these questions quickly because I know time is going. Um, so you might want to ask about their background and how they came to hold their current position. You may want to question what general skills are required in this line of work. What are some of the challenges of your job or your organization is facing? 
you may want to ask them, what does their typical day look like? What do their day-to-day -day responsibilities involve, for example? You may want to ask them, what kind of decision-making do they do or they participate in? Things like, what, does, you know, what skills do their company value or what's valuable to their company at the moment? Um, again, I put, you know, what skills, attributes and abilities are essential for success in the job or field? And you may want to go a step further and be futuristic thinking. How do they think that the job that they're doing will change in the next five years? And that kind of helps you to also gauge maybe what skills or additional skills you might need going forward or as you go through your studies. So let's move on to the next slide. And I'm just going to take away points because I want you guys to have time for Q&A. Um, and I appreciate that we're coming up near to uh, two o'clock. So take away points quickly. Remember, networking benefits, what the benefits are. It can boost your career, enhance your visibility and enable you to meet prospective mentors. OK, so those of you who are particularly those of you who are looking for mentors, you know, and you don't have anyone in immediate your immediate network or anyone you immediately know who can mentor you and help you kind of climb further up the ladder or move towards your, your chosen career. You really need to sort of start sussing out who might be um, a potential mentor in your network. Remember, it's not about the quantity of your connections, but the quality. OK, also don't ask for favours too soon. Make sure you get to know the person. It's the same way as if somebody goes out to you on day one and comes out to you on day two and asks for an informational interview. OK, nobody likes to feel used. Have a game plan. So what are you hoping to achieve out of the meeting? Um, or, you know, whatever engagement you're having with the individual. Also be prepared, have your pitch ready, okay? And this also includes, um, you know, at your informational interview, um, being prepared also with other application materials. So if they ask you for your resume, for example, at an informational interview, you want to be able to present it straight after the virtual meeting. Um, you don't want to be waiting, you know, for a week while you get it ready. You don't want to keep them waiting for a week while you get it ready and send it over to them. Because that is how a lot of the times people have had internal referrals. They have an informational interview and as a result of that informational interview, that person may have asked them for their resume or that person that you are having that informational interview, you may feel that you strike up such a good relationship with them. You may feel that actually the door's open for you to ask them if they would be willing to, um, you know, hand your resume or your CV over to HR or someone internally within the organisation. So really, you know, when I say prepare for your informational interview, be prepared holistically. Also, be authentic. Trust is gained when you show a pattern of consistent behaviour, right? And do ask for help. OK, you can ask for help in terms of you can have a one to one to tailor specifically for you what networking strategy you think will work best for you. Um, you know, book a career coaching session with us. You know, there's a number of us as coaches. And, you know, for those of you who have coaching sessions available, do, you know, feel free to use us to go through your pitch pitch or practice your pitch. Okay? And then also do remember to follow up. So send a thank you note after an informational interview. Let them know that you appreciate them taking time out. So if this was in a pre-COVID world and you um, maybe weren't too far away from the person that you're, you're networking with, so they're in your locality, I would suggest meeting face-to-face -face and offering to pay for their drink or coffee as a way of showing your appreciation. Obviously, in this environment, we can't do that because everything has to be done at a distance. But in any event, you really want to show your appreciation and you still want to be able to say to them, listen, if there's anything you feel I can do for you, um, then, you know, please do give me a shout. Because like I said before, it needs to be two way. OK, and follow up even after a networking event. Right. So this is about within 48 to 72 hours. Make sure you send that connect request on LinkedIn or um, that text or that message, however it is, whether it's on Facebook, whatever slack whatever channel you're going to be using connect with them as soon as possible and so ladies and gentlemen that brings us to the end of our webinar um, i know we started a few minutes late so maybe we can do a quick uh, couple of minutes for any q and a questions you may have so um thank you very much so do you have any questions let's have a look in the chat 
So Jackie, uh, AJ had placed a question and I said Jackie will answer this. His question is, um, do you really need to have a couple of projects done and your resume updated before you start reaching out? You don't need to have them already done when you first start reaching out. But what I would say is when you start to move on to the stage where you are requesting informational interviews, and particularly where somebody said yes, and they're willing to speak to you, I highly recommend it because there's nothing worse than sort of having this, you know, engagement with someone, really feeling that you've hit it off well. And they may say to you, actually, um, you've just triggered my mind. We've got this opening in our organization. Um, we've only been, it's not really been published publicly because like I said to you, only 20% of, of roles really that are you, will you be aware of that are publicly advertised? And if they said to you, the role closes in two days, you really want to be ready to send that resume across to that individual so that they can refer it onward as quickly as possible. If you don't, it's not the end of the world, but it just means that you might find yourself under pressure time pressure to be able to cobble all your documents and your information together and get it in um, the required format, you know, and get it refined and just as you want it before the deadline or the timeline closes or before it loses the momentum, right? Because if you leave it at a week, you know, the moment is not as hot as, as you do it straight after that session. Okay, let's see, any other questions for us? So AJ, I have responded to you. It requires a specific discussion one-on-one -on -one for your question. Um, Jackie, there's one more question from Jash. He says, I would like to ask whether you have any tips for asking a referral being a fresher when you haven't built an extensive network yet. Okay, so when you're a fresher, it also, it also depends on your, your um, do make use of your alumni network, right? Because sometimes, and I'm not sure if it, you know, if you have that where you are, but sometimes your alumni network also has connections with certain industries and certain individuals. And if they do, see if you can get um, whoever is kind of in charge of the alumni network to be able to make referrals. That's often the easiest way, or at least introduce you to people that you can engage with who may be able to make a referral for you. Uh, remember with referrals, the thing is people still need to know stuff about you, okay? Because when somebody makes a referral about you, um, they need to have the confidence that you can do what you say you do. And so there still needs to be that element of trust. Uh, so you still need to make that connection. You still need to get to know that person but what you should do is have a short bio even though you're fresher have a short bio still have your pitch right um you know what you want to do you know what you where you want to go and um, make use of your alumni network right um some universities will have a, a linkedin one some will have a facebook one some will have both or slack one and really reach out to also other people um, who are in a similar position with you so that also you can you can have sort of that pair accountability where you can both work together and practice your pitch so you feel confident in reaching out to people that your university or your institution are affiliated with so you're going to want to first reach out to people they're affiliated with because when you connect with people in that organization you can mention your university and of course it will already spark a oh yeah we know that institution you're a fresher from there okay great so you've already got that initial connection and it should make it a bit easier for the conversations to start flowing and for you to be able to just talk about yourself what you do and where you want to go so I hope that helps. So Jackie, there's one more question, um, which says, uh, is it unprofessional to ask if they can connect us to the company's HR business partner or a department head that you want to engage in case of potential opportunities in the future? So again, it isn't necessarily unprofessional, but it depends on how well. So this goes back to my point of, feeling people's energy and their vibe and understanding how well you connect with them. So if you've been warming up and you've sort of had a series of um, conversations or engagements with them over the, you know, whether it's you've spoken to them on the phone from time to time, maybe a quick call, or whether you've just been engaging with them on LinkedIn or Facebook, you may feel actually me and this person have got a good enough relationship where I feel I can reach out to them. 
Um, alternatively, the way to phrase it is, you know, I would really like to look for opportunities in your organization. Could you tell me who the best person would be for me to, you know, forward or send my resume to in your company? That opens the door for them to decide whether or not to say to you, please, oh, just send it to me and I'll forward it internally. Okay, so you've left it open. So either they can come back to you and say, well, yeah, I can give you a name. Um, and then you go off and do it, or they might offer to do it yourself. So rather than saying to them, can you pass this on, leave it open and say, this is what you'd like to do. You'd like to apply for their organ to their organization. You're wondering if there are any opportunities that might be suitable. You may be a suitable fit, and you're just wondering who the best person is to apply to and when the best time is to reach out to them. So Jackie, we do have questions that are going on coming in. And uh, I think the time is up. In case you have time, we could pick up just one more question and then the students could come on the Students Hub during the hotline chat session and they could place their questions and the coaches who are online will be more than happy to answer them. Would you like to pick up one more question? Yes, let's do that. We did start a few minutes late, so let's pick up one more question. So Lourdes is asking how to connect without experience in the field I am transiting. Mine is artificial intelligence. Okay, so this is where it's really good for you to um, join some of the groups. So this is my point about going onto LinkedIn and joining groups. And people are often, you know, when you join the network group, so there are a lot of artificial intelligence groups on LinkedIn that you could join. And this is gonna be about you then looking at people who have posted comments or just going through and identifying people that you think would be really helpful to you to connect to. So when obviously you click on their names, you can look at their profile, right? So one of the best ways for you to start off is rather than going straight for someone senior, you may want to connect with somebody who's more junior, okay? Or somebody who, when you click on their profile, you can see that they've made a transition. Why? Because they're probably more likely to help you. They will understand what you're going through and the fact that you're just gaining that experience and trying to transition yourself. And they're more likely to kind of see that connection and want to also help out and reach out and help you. And this goes to the, to the point of making that personalized message, that personalized connect request. And at that first connect request, that is where you're going to mention, listen, I've just, you know, I'm working into transitioning into this area i'm building up my experience i'm building up my project experience i'm studying whatever it is and then you you make the connection with them i've noticed that you've recently started working in this field from this day just wondered if you could share your experience of how you managed to make that transition so it's making that connection if you look back for example and you may find that okay you don't have an experience but you may see something in common so maybe they're at udacity as well then you can kind of pull that out and say hey i noticed that you studied at udacity too um, I'm currently, you know, in this field and I'm making the same transition. Would it be possible for you to share some tips? So even if you don't want to set up an informational interview with them, you can always ask them to share some tips. Maybe they can share some helpful trends or some podcasts or some blogs that they think that will help you to or refer you even say, or is there someone you feel that you can refer me to that can give me further guidance or advice? Um, and just really um, start it off that way. Don't try and make big leaps or, or big steps, little steps to begin with. So, you know, and, you know, like Mira was just saying, um, I mean, I'm gonna be, me and Mira both have our um, student hub hour, our hotline hour tomorrow rather than today. But, you know, like Mira was saying, any of the coaches can still pick up your queries. If you wanna pop into the student hub tomorrow, um, where me and Mira at different times will be online, we can probably pick up queries as well. And of course, you know, if you want to avail yourself of the one to one sessions, that's even better because then we can really give you more one on one um, tailored advice on what you can do and steps you can take and how you can use this information to your advantage. Okay, guys. I hope you guys have found that helpful. We're going to have to obviously come to an end now um, because we've gone a bit over time but I really appreciate all of you being here thank you for taking the time to come and um, really just be on this session and for engaging in the polls it's great thank you all so much wherever you are in the world whether it's nighttime morning day enjoy the rest of your day all right and take care and stay safe bye all